So I'm watching two teams last night who were both rumored to be Jimmy teams, Browns and Steelers. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, well, now you're three games in. Should you have gotten Jimmy? Now, the Cleveland Browns are 2-1, and one, and quite frankly, they should be 3-0 and oh if they hadn't have gagged that, the, the end of the game against what the New York Jets. What a weird one. I mean, that's yeah. one in a million the way that game ended. Totally, totally. So, in those of you who didn't see that last week, minute 22 to go. The Browns, are they go, Chubb goes in for a touchdown. The extra point or the one prior had been missed, so they're only up 13 instead of 14, but you're up by two touchdowns with a minute 20 to go against Joe Flacco and the Jets. So two things happen right there. The Jets go right down the field, broken coverage. There's a receiver standing by himself. The Browns don't even chase him because they're kind of like, yeah, whatever, dude. We're this up game's by over. Totally. <laughs> this game's Walks over. into the end zone. Then the Jets, just little plucky onside kick. Oh, look, we got it. Go right down the field again. Knife through butter, touchdown. Jets win by one. And the Browns have egg on their face. But no real fault of Jacoby Brissett, who hasn't been great, but he's been fine. He's been solid enough. And so they win last night. They're 2-1. and one. And, uh, in fact, even pro, I saw this. This is funny. Pro Football Talk threw out an article today. Like, could Jacoby do enough to where when Deshaun gets back, Jacoby keeps the job? Nice. I'm like, they're giving him $250 million. Right. No. They, no. they might Deshaun slow Watson. play Deshaun a little bit if, you know, if Jacoby's playing well. You, you may not want to rush him back. If the team's winning, you can kind of ease him in if you have a winning record. Um, reminder, Kevin Hart tickets in just a couple of minutes. Stay right where you are if you're looking for those. October 1 at Chase Center, courtesy of Live Nation. Hang tight on those. Just a second. We'll give the Kevin Hart tickets away. So I think the Browns... Um, I would say, if you're going to go the, through the whole list of Jimmy Rumor teams, did they make a good decision or not? Cleveland Browns, you'd have to say they made the right call. Right. They're doing fine, at least for the moment. Their schedule's been easy. And that's what I said going into the uh, yep. the start of the you year. Did. I said that the, the Browns could still win with Jacoby Brissett because of the nature of their early season schedule. Although, nice win last night over Pittsburgh. I know it's not the Pittsburgh we're all used to seeing, but divisional game, bounce back spot after the embarrassing loss to the Jets. That was a good win. Pittsburgh's offense has been awful. Don't get it twisted. They won a game against the Bengals week one because they had a pick six, got four picks against Joe Burrow. Um, after that, they scored 14 points at home against the Patriots, 17 points last night against the Browns. They do not look good on offense. I would argue, and I know Kenny Pickett is looming. We don't know exactly what he's going to be. I don't think there's any huge pressure to get him into the game. But if the Steelers wanted to compete at a higher level early in the year, I am going to say that's a miss. They should have tried to get Jimmy Garoppolo rather than Mitch Trubisky. I disagree just because of the nature of Kenny Pickett and you know Trubisky versus Jimmy Garoppolo. Jimmy Garoppolo's better. He's not a lot better. He's a little bit better. He's significantly better. Is he better to the point where Pittsburgh would be 3-0 and right now? Probably not. And at what cost in terms of draft capital to bring him in? And I do think that Pittsburgh is going to turn to Pickett sooner rather than later. Right, but so, is that a good thing? I mean, I, well, I, I, it's, like, a, it's a good thing, I think, for Pittsburgh because you have to rebuild at some point. They've, they've been, what, 17 straight years without a losing record? Right, but so did they have to do that? I mean, you now have a division. The Baltimore Ravens look solid enough, but they gagged away a game last week. They're only 1-1. One and one. Everybody came in saying the Bengals were the favorite because they won. They went to the Super Bowl last year. They're zero and two, and they look right. disgusting. Like they've had a <laughs> wow. terrible start to the year. Okay, Cleveland is sitting over here in first place. You could have competed in this division, and they still are. And, and no, I, I disagree with. Yeah, again, with a four pick game on Joe Burrow, like it's not having anything to do with Trubisky. And, and when you go to Cody Pickett, you're essentially signaling that's a wrap on this year. You could have had Jimmy for one year. Remember, placeholder plus. You could still go to Cody Pickett after a year on the bench. Sorry, I keep saying Cody Pickett. I know. His Hard brother. not to. Yeah, Kenny His Pickett. Brother. Not bad. Anyway, so, yeah, it, like that to me would have been a situation where Jimmy Jimmy could have competed in that division. He's not going to win the AFC. We know who's going to win the AFC, at least we think. One of those two teams. Yeah, Buffalo, Kansas City. Right, but I mean, like you, you could have made noise 
with Garoppolo that you're not going to make with Trubisky. That's that's definitely my position. But on this uh, one. to think that you can't go to Cody or Kenny Pickett and still compete well, you can't go to Cody. is, I mean, I think that's disrespectful because we all looked at Trey Lance and said, here's a guy who's only had a couple starts, and we expect him to come in and be able to be a competent quarterback and lead a team into the playoffs. Yeah, and those, I know the Niners are better than Pittsburgh. And but those aren't equal players either. One's the third pick in the draft with an unbelievable skill set. Pick one is a, a guy who had much more college experience. Right. But is not the prospect that Trey Lance is. I mean, no, but the the same idea though of an inexperienced and, quarterback coming into a system, he should be able to do well enough. He's also a rookie. Like Trey, like this was a big part of the thing for me that people I think dismissed. Like Trey was not a rookie. Like Trey, right. Trey had a year of being around an NFL camp and learning. Pickett has not had that. You're not going to win with Pickett this year. Like I'm, I'm not saying they're going to go 13 and about, four, but right, I'd say that about any rookie. You're not, not going to win with a rookie. You can come in and be competitive if the team around <laughs> you is is good enough. And Pittsburgh's not as good as they have been, but in that division, you mentioned Cincinnati is struggling. Cleveland without Deshaun Watson is ordinary, and and Baltimore. Baltimore's good. They should be the dominant team in that division. But all I'm saying is Kenny Pickett could come in and be okay. Doesn't mean he's going to come in and be a tire fire. Only other AFC team that was rumored, I guess, at any level was the Houston Texans. And Davis Mills, I mean, they're 0 1 and 1, so it's not like anything special is going on there. However, they're in a division that. I wow, mean, I, one win. Somebody in that division is going gonna, is gonna to host a game. Someone in that division is going to host wow, a game. When you put it that way, that, that's, okay. uh, that's shocking. Right? January, right? Da, ba, 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 da, ba. Like, here we Scat, go. Da, 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 da. There it is. Ladies and gentlemen, the Jaguars are hosting the Chargers, or something like that is going to happen in January. Right. Right? The ja- You're right. One win Jaguar, in the whole division. Or Jaguars in the, in the Dolphins, maybe. The Dolphins <laughs> could be like 13 and 4. The Dolphins are real. Well, and the, the Jaguars I agree. I agree. at 8, 8, and 1 <laughs> could, uh, low, or, you know. Low key, great game this weekend. And yeah, by the way, not in low a, key. In about, well, it's low key because, A, locally, we're talking Niners and Broncos, True. plus Tom Brady's playing Aaron Rodgers. And that's going to be your afternoon featured game of the week. But in the morning, Dolphins, Bills. Man. Hey, now. Sign me up. Hey, now. This is a great weekend. You could literally. Sit down, and I don't know what your package is and red zone and what you, you want to watch. Eyes on. Keep my well, package out your mouth. I, I, you could sit down at 10 in the morning and roll through a featured game like Bills Dolphins, followed by Bucks Packers, followed by Niners Broncos. Oh, man, that this package is, is going to be overwhelming. It's a good Sunday. This yeah, is a no good doubt. Sunday. Yeah, especially when you, like you said, you talk about featured games because otherwise in the morning slate Houston Chicago y- you couldn't wow. pay me to watch four quarters of that mess hey. uh, I mean Detroit yeah. Detroit and Minnesota in the uh the NFC North fine I, don't, I mean I, that, yeah I don't mind that game matchup, and that's a, that's a good fantasy game those two offenses totally. have a lot of yeah people people will be into that Cincinnati and the Jets eh. I mean no Jets. Vegas and Tennessee a couple of 0 and 2 teams that's not very watchable so but, this might actually be a, a a day where you turn off the red zone and you just put on Buffalo on Miami yeah, yeah no doubt yeah that one is is going to be a lot of fun oh, all right go over to the NFC and let's walk through some of those teams uh, the rumor that we heard just a couple of days ago, the 49ers thought Garoppolo was going to be the quarterback of the Washington Commanders. Then he got surgery, and they decided to go with Carson Wentz. Now, Washington is 1-1. One one. They beat the Jags at home. They lost on the road at Detroit. Um, statistically, the Washington Commanders have been moving the football. Carson Wentz has played really good. They scored 28 against the Jags, and then... I mean, what, what was the final score of that Detroit game? But it was high scoring, 36-27. They've gone 28 and 27. I'm going to say right now, if you gave the, the commanders a chance to do this again, they're probably okay with Wentz. Right. Even though he had a terrible sort of news track during camp. Remember? The media's sitting there going, so, every time you throw the ball, it goes somewhere <laughs> you don't want it to go. How are you feeling about that? And that whole thing got started, but he's looked good enough he's looked competitive so far to start the year wouldn't you agree with that absolutely and washington's looked better than what we would have thought and in that division where there are two two and oh teams washington probably not going to win that division but they have looked certainly better 
than we thought. And you look at Dallas without a starting quarterback, they're in a little bit of turmoil. And the Giants, I don't think any of us are true believers in the Giants. Although, if you look at their game this weekend, they could very easily be 3-0, the Monday New York night, football yeah, Giants. Monday you night know? against the Cowboys. Yeah, I, I would say the Giants don't regret it because... They needed it to find out if Daniel Jones can play or not. And, and I know that a lot of us would say, how, how the hell do you not know by now? But they need to decide if Daniel Jones is going to be the guy. So I almost always felt this way. Like, if the Giants brought in Jimmy, it would be to completely move on from Daniel Jones. Like, you can't, what are you going to do? Like, you can't have them both there. Right. The presence They're is, kind of the same guy. Right. Well, and Jimmy's I, better. The Giants, to me, were a possibility to bring in Jimmy if they had just said, we're like, no, we're done with Daniel Jones yeah. and we want to have Jimmy this year. But that's not where they're at. So that one also makes sense to me. There are a couple of teams, though, in the NFC that I would suggest regret this. I'm going to move Seattle aside because I don't think Seattle had a chance. Right, if the 49ers, Unless they cut him. Right. The 49ers, if they were saying, no, we're trading him, we're keeping him, then Seattle never had a chance to get their hands on him. But talk to me about New Orleans and Atlanta for a second. Okay? And, and you tell me, Atlanta sitting at 0-2, if you wouldn't rather have Garoppolo running that squad than Marcus Mariota. I, I would, absolutely. I would. And I, would. I, I felt the same way about New Orleans and Jameis Winston. I'm not a big Jameis Winston fan. I think he's, and we talk about Jimmy G and the Jimmy Ono throws. Jameis Winston will give it to you even more often mm-hmm. than Jimmy Garoppolo will. So I think both of those teams would have been better served to have Jimmy Garoppolo in. I guess the only other one that we're looking at, and, and I probably should have thrown them in there too, is the Carolina Panthers. That was definitely a team we talked about a lot, and they opted for Baker Mayfield as opposed to Jimmy Garoppolo. He beats out Sam Darnold. And, uh, oh, look at that. They're 0-2, and their coach is completely on the hottest seat in the entire league. Exactly. He's the most likely uh, head coach to be fired. The odds-on choice to be the first coach to be fired. And Carolina, in a division where it felt like you were playing for second, you were playing for a wild card anyway. Yep. But now sitting at 0-2, you're in real trouble. By the way, that division... Isn't that, to me, if you want to look at something that's really, really rosy for the 49ers, remember what we said at the beginning of the year, okay? Take a look at the NFC, and let's go with what we know. We didn't know much. The Bucks are they going to be good? Yeah. The Packers, are sure. they going to be good, sure. good enough? Uh, the Rams are going to be, on some level, a squad. And then there were the wild card teams, right? The East is going to get somebody. We thought maybe the Eagles would be good, and it looks like they will be. So let's put the Eagles, Packers, and Bucks over here. That's three teams. Then there's the wild cards, and actually I should say Rams too. So yeah, there's, there's yeah. four teams, right? Then there's the wild cards of like the Vikings and the Cardinals. And I guess you'd have to say the 49ers because they're bringing on a new quarterback. But now they go with what they know. The only fear I would have had of the 49ers not making the playoffs if they had healthy, good quarterback play is, what if the Saints or Panthers are like way better than we expected them to be? Well, they're not. Right. (laughs) I just, it's like, again, if, if Jimmy plays the next 15 games, I don't see how they don't end up in the playoffs. I just don't see enough here in the NFC that's going to potentially scare them or beat them or win 10 or 11 games, which I would fully expect the 49ers to do if Jimmy plays 15 games. Well, it would be Arizona in a head-to-head if you lost both to Arizona, and then they become better than we thought because Arizona beat you twice. The other one, which... uh, no, nobody's really believing in. I just mentioned it before. The Giants. If the Giants beat Dallas on Monday night, now they go to three and zero. The Cowboys are one and two without Dak Prescott, and you can start to really look at Jerry Jones and wonder what he's going to do to try to blow this thing up. Because Jerry Jones is not going to sit idly by and watch this thing completely implode. But if they lose. Let's say Dallas wins and they beat the Giants and they're both now two and, two one. and one. Well, Dallas doesn't scare you, and then the Giants will have been exposed as the frauds that we all kind of think that they are. Minnesota's another team where, you know, the way Minnesota went about losing their last game makes you think that they're not the real deal. They're good. They just can't play at night. 
Well, I mean, he, yeah, he, he if can't I'm be Minnesota, that simple. I'm going to petition the league for no day more, games. No more primetime games. Do not put Kirk Cousins on national TV. It just doesn't work. Chicago beat you, but we all kind of feel like that yeah. was a little bit of a fluke. And Detroit is a cute story, bro. But I don't even think that they're going to have a winning record. So as you mentioned it, you start to go through all the teams that don't really seem to be popping. And Carolina, one of those teams that maybe would scare you at 0-2. The Niners are in a great spot for a wild card at least. 